Hi, my name's Jennifer Oldfield. I'm the Director of Communications for the Global Partnership for Sustainable Development Data. Well, our organization represents 320 different partners from all over the world and a number of governments that we work closely with um, in Africa, also the Philippines, Colombia and Costa Rica. Many of them are here for the forum and this is really an opportunity for us to work together, progress a number of our projects and celebrate success and share that with the wider community of data for development practitioners. Yeah, I think that uh, there are many different communities within the data for development international community. Those who are focused on st statistics, those who are focused on timely data, those who are focused on big data, citizen generated data. This really brings them together. I think what's needed is for those different communities to collaborate more to really work out how can we monitor the sustainable development goals in close to real time and see whether we're actually making progress towards Agenda 2030. So some of the gaps uh, in data for development are to do with the timeliness of the data, to do with interoperability. Today we've launched a guide on interoperability with the UN Stats Department uh, and we're hoping that that will encourage partners to work on seamless interactions between the different sorts of data. Another is uh, the scaling up of pilots, innovative pilots, to become more sustainable. Uh, and that's something that we can only do together. Uh, good morning, my name is Juraj Riec and I am the director of the Statistics Division at the UN Economic and Social Commission for Western Asia, which is based in Beirut and serves uh, 22 Arab states of the region. Can you tell us about what you are doing here at Amdes? What kind of support you can provide to the data making in the region? Yes, uh, the Statistics Division at UNESCO was created in 2008 by the decision of the Ministerial Session of ESCO. And this was in the hope that we would help member states to improve the official statistics, the availability of data to improve the quality and reliability of data. And that is therefore while our main goal is to build the capacity of national statistical systems. We do not produce data ourselves, but we make sure that the Arab region produces data and that those data are more readily available, especially now at the time of the implementation of 2030 Agenda of Sustainable Development that requires many detailed, timely and uh, relevant data for monitoring the progress towards sustainable development goals. One of our major challenges is the uneven level of development of statistical systems among different countries. This is because of uh, the tradition, this is because of uh, different economic conditions, but also in of a different setup in which the statistics work, because statistics is not cut off the life of the society, statistics is part of it. So it means uh, the whole country needs a specific approach to statistics. It should be individual to each country. Therefore, it is very important to pass the, a positive experience from one country to another. Forum like this one will help member states to learn from each other's experience. And it is important that we make Arab states to learn from each other's experience. The Arab statisticians are very well educated, are very well prepared for their job. They just need to exchange the experience in using international statistical standards in the Arab context. They should be localized to a country, to a region, to different sub-regions of the Arab uh, area. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Here today at the UN World Data Forum, uh, we have the Media Zone, which is really the goal was we started at the WISIS with the idea of how do we promote what 
happens behind the walls, what happens at these meetings, and how we could actually send this information via social media channels and platforms and shared resources so that we could educate public and private sector to engage around the sustainable development goals, or in this specific instance, what goes on within the UN World Data Forum, and how the importance of data today being it becoming a more of every day a human right, how do we actually educate others to know what goes on here and how to activate. So when you start looking at the challenges of these events as it relates to how do we communicate this information, this is why, again, we're here at the Media Zone to get this information out in short sound bites that people could understand, it could engage, and could activate. When you start to look at the context of data itself as a media sort of architecture, right, there is not enough information out there about the importance of data today. There's so much going on around the world about the privatization of data, data as a human rights, data, you know, GDRP, as well as Safe Harbor, but really how do we start to educate folks that, this, that they could also partake in this future of data and what we could do with data and how we could utilize data to help build around the sustainable development goals and help address each of the 17 goals as well as how we could do things within each member state in each different country and intergovernmental organizations and or governmental organizations. When, when we look at data and we start to look at the integrity of data, you know, to really kind of dive into the topic of, of the importance of data, again, data for the purposes of humanity, data for the purposes of impact, it is, it is one of the important reasons why we have the UN World Data Forum is to, again, to bring in all public, private, intergovernmental, governmental organizations together so that we can start to analyze this information, we can learn from it. It's not just learn from it, educate ourselves, and create better policies that will allow us to build better ways of utilization of data between private sector, public sector, and intergovernmental sectors. And, and how does that benefit humanity? How does that help us advance the SDGs? But again, part of the goal here of a lot of the work that we're doing is making sure that we are communicating this information to everyone so that everyone understands that they have a say in the conversation. And again, it goes back to integrity of information is you need to bring and, and create open data structures, open data hubs, which is one of the things that we'll hear about today, um, you know, open data hub platform so that everyone can utilize information and build on top of uh, APIs and so forth. So when speaking about since the last UN World Data Forum, there's a lot has happened in the, in the world of data. There's so much has changed. Even what we've seen was happening in, in, in the private sector as we're seeing how data is being utilized and how people are now becoming aware. And I think what's happened since the last UN World Data Forum and this data forum is that people are now aware. They're aware that there's this new currency called data. They're aware that there's information about them Every single day that we use our digital devices, every single day that we do something, there's information being mined about us. How do we use that information to put it to good work? How do we use that information to support all these organizations that are here trying to do the work of the sustainable development goals and they're trying to achieve the goals by understanding information, learning from information, and then helping engage other people with better information. And that's, again, data is at the core of all that. So my name is Robert Kirkpatrick. I'm director of the United Nations Global Pulse Initiative in the Secretary General's office at the UN. Big data represents an unprecedented opportunity to transform our entire approach to implementing the sustainable development goals and in measuring progress along the way. Um, as people go about their daily lives today, as they buy and sell goods, as they search for information, as they communicate, as they share on social networks, they're producing an extraordinary amount of information. Um, this information is in the hands of private sector, um, but it turns out that private sector sees the opportunity around the SDGs, and they're very keen to work with public sector and civil society to find safe and responsible ways to unlock the value of that data for, uh, for public good. So what we see is 
Uh, for example, many opportunities to use real-time data from mobile phone networks, from uh, financial transactions, and from social media to produce indicators within the sustainable development um, goal framework. Um, how people move, how they spend, can be used to understand how they utilize public space uh, to measure uh, tourism, uh, measure migration. There are tremendous opportunities in this space. The challenge, of course, is that you have to make sure you're protecting privacy in the process. Um, when we work with these data sets, we're only working with anonymized data. At the end of the day, this isn't about what's happening with the level of, at the level of any one individual. It's about what's happening in a particular district, in a part of a country. Um, so we see a tremendous opportunity to bring together uh, the data that private sector has uh, together with the, the needs of public sector to bring an entirely new approach to achievement to the SDGs. So Global Pulse, uh, as an initiative of the Secretary General, is focused on two problems. One, how do we get to the finish line on implementing solutions that actually use big data safely and responsibly at scale? And what are the policy frameworks and ethical codes of conduct that need to be in place to make sure that we're taking a first do no harm approach? Um, about eight years ago, we started reaching out to companies uh, within private sector and different industries around an idea we call data philanthropy saying, let's find a way for you to share some of the data that powers your business in a privacy-protecting way so that it can be used for the public good. Some examples of this. So we use uh, real-time uh, data on how people move through mobile phone networks to understand how they're spreading diseases or how they're displaced by natural disasters. And that information can then be used by public authorities to understand how to respond to a crisis. We use speech recognition of indigenous languages in Uganda to understand in real time how communities in places where very few people have access to the internet are calling in to talk radio shows and they're talking about you know, the challenges facing new mothers or farmers and their crop diseases or living with HIV and you can suddenly get real time machine readable data from the transcriptions in indigenous Ugandan languages from communities that are normally completely disconnected. Uh, we're working with data from financial transactions uh, through our partners with chips with banks to be able to see how debit card transactions drop after a natural disaster and where some communities recover quickly and others struggle for months. There are many different kinds of data that are out there that have the potential to yield these kinds of valuable insights that are going to be game changing in terms of how we make decisions. The other half of our work is really looking at the ethical frameworks. Um, we see a need to reframe the discussions around privacy. Uh, one, recognizing that existing legislation doesn't protect people from the privacy risks of big data, and at the same time also recognizing that it's not just the misuse of data we need to worry about, it's the misuse, it's the non-use of data, the failure to innovate, to transform our public services and early warning systems. And so uh, that we've been working across the UN system on a common set of guidelines on privacy um, and three weeks ago, those just got uh, adopted across the UN system by 29 agencies. So we're, we're very uh, glad to see that. Um, from the forum, I mean, this, is, this forum feels very different than Cape Town did two years ago. We really have a community of practice forming that is bringing together official statistics, private sector, civil society, the big data community, the artificial intelligence community, and all the related technologies, and everybody's just getting on with business. It feels like a tipping point. We're here looking for partners whom we can work with to take this to the next level.